Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. School leaders in North Dakota have a daunting task ahead of them. The governor says it's up to them to formulate a plan to best educate the kids in their district and keep everyone within the education system safe from COVID-19. Valley News Team's Katie Offerly takes a closer look at the guidance given by the state and has reaction from parents. This was the day that many in North Dakota have been waiting for. Uh, North Dakota North Governor Doug Burgum and State Superintendent Kirsten Baszler announced that schools could open for in-person instruction, online learning, or a hybrid model in the fall, saying school districts must lay out their detailed plan ahead of time. Each district must develop a, a health and safety plan and update their distance learning plans. Both plans must be created in consultation with faculty, families, staff, students, and the local public health units. Both Fargo and West Fargo school districts released statements saying the coming days will involve continued planning. Fargo Superintendent Rupak Gandhi saying during a school board meeting that the district will seek input from parents and staff with the final plan tentatively set to be announced at the end of July. Tomorrow we are going to have three staff input sessions. Uh, they're going to be done virtually, but up to 500 staff members can join at a time um, to, to look at our plan, and we're going to give them multiple opportunities for feedback throughout that process. So on Thursday, we will be communicating with parents an opportunity, again, for them to join an input session where they can review our plan. Superintendent Gandhi previously told Valley News Live his hope is to open for in-person instruction while offering online options for those who need it, something many parents we spoke with would be interested in. Every house has different circumstances. So in my case, I would rather my daughter do online learning like she did in the spring so that she's not bringing anything home. In a school setting, you know, one kid gets it in a classroom of 30 kids, they're all exposed. One parent of five says she wants her kids to return to school, but the risk factor is a concern. Whatever the percentage is, which I know it's super tiny, but what if that's my kid? You know, what if it's my neighbor's kid? Some say it should be up to the parent, depending on the school's plan, saying they just hope for more information soon. I'm hoping the school districts will act pretty quickly, and I think they will. I think they've been planning for this. Um, I'm sure they've got a lot of uh, plans, just in case every scenario happens pretty much. School districts and state leaders all say as plans are formulated, safety and well-being must be the top priority. In Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. For his part, Governor Burgum said we're entering new territory this fall with a dual purpose to focus on providing the highest quality education for all students and safeguarding the health and safety of students, staff, families and communities. To read more about the guidelines set up by the state, you can head over to the Valley News Live app and click on this story. And that smart restart plan also applies to college students in North Dakota. The university system is working to make sure students have the option to physically return to campus this fall. It says a hybrid educational model would be the safest way to bring students back to campus, allowing students to meet face to face or take classes online. The student, it's quarantine. They can go back to their dorm, maybe go back to, you know, if they, if they live in the area, to their home, still take the classes or when they're better, they've recovered, they can walk back into the classroom. Um, and that's what we refer to as this hybrid or this high flex. University leaders say social distancing, heightened hygiene, and coronavirus testing will be essential for reopening. There will be 34 testing sites around the state to test students before they come to campus, along with more testing during the school year. The father of one of the airmen killed in Grand Forks says that she was scared of her suspected killer. Natasha Apotion died on June 1st in a shooting incident inside one of the dorms at the Grand Forks Air Force Base. Brian Murray says his daughter had been dating fellow airman Julian Torres for only a few days. The night before she died, Murray says Apotion ended things with a 20-year-old who also died. Murray is calling on the military to be held accountable for her death. You know, you wake up every day almost hoping that, you know, you're just going to snap out of it and it, and then you're brought back to reality um, thinking knowing that she's gone 
A vigil is being held tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in front of the federal courthouse in Grand Forks. The investigation by the Air Force into this deadly on-base shooting is ongoing. There's word tonight that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit issued an administrative stay temporarily preventing the district judge's shutdown order allowing the Dakota Access Pipeline to continue operating while the appeals court considers arguments. That word coming from U.S. Senator John Hoven, who says the Dakota Access Pipeline is important energy infrastructure that has been safely operating for three years. He says this temporary stay is a good step that recognizes the significant impact that shutting down the pipeline will have on the state's economy. 55 more cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in North Dakota, bringing the total active cases to 720. Another death has been linked to the illness, a woman in her 80s from Cass County with underlying health conditions. 88 deaths have been linked to COVID-19 in the state. Over 3,600 people are listed as recovered. Minnesota is reporting 403 new cases, bringing the active case count to 3,911. Six new deaths are also reported, taking the death toll to 1,510. 107 Minnesotans are in the ICU. Over 37,000 people have recovered from the virus. Researchers at the University of Minnesota are working on a new type of antibody test that could determine whether a person has immunity to the virus, which causes COVID-19. Jennifer Austin explains their findings in the early parts of this new test. Back in the spring, U of M researchers came out with a test to detect whether a person has antibodies to COVID-19. And it can tell us if someone has antibodies, but we still don't know how much antibody actually provides immunity and whether there's special kinds of antibodies that are important for immunity. Dr. Mark Jenkins, director of the Center for Immunology at the U of M Medical School and his lab worked on that first test and now they're working on another. This test is not only designed, it is designed to not only say do you have antibodies, but would you likely have protective immunity? Dr. Jenkins describes it like this. Imagine the cells in your lungs are protected by a lock and the virus which causes COVID-19 is a key which fits into it. If it's unlocked, a person gets infected. While the first test detects whether you have antibodies, this new one would detect what they're doing, hanging out on the key's handle or on the part of the key which goes into the lock, preventing the virus from opening it up and infecting you. So the hope would be the, the current antibody test would be followed in people who are positive with a test that can give information about their likelihood that they have immunity. And I think that would be valuable information for policymakers, for a lot of, you know, those of us, you know, people who are out there in the real world now wondering how safe is it for me to be out there? Dr. Jenkins says it's possible the antibodies don't work how they're described. This virus is neutralized in some way that researchers don't even know about yet. This is a new virus with a lot left to learn, and they're hoping to learn more in a month. A local brewery is closing its doors. Flatland Brewery in West Fargo announced on its Facebook page that they'll be closing on August 2nd. The Post said they're closing because of the ongoing COVID-19 measures and the hardships the business suffered because of it. The brewery has been around for four years. It just keeps happening. Well, another one announced, you know, closing today. There'll be another one next week kind of thing. And I sit here in the evening time and I look at this parking lot that used to be busy for all the bars and restaurants too, and it's just definitely slow. A local business owner says lockdowns are damaging small businesses like Flatland Brewery. They're also pushing people to shop local. Amanda Brunel says she and their staff are taking the necessary precautions when interacting with guests, but lockdowns are damaging the local economy.